Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be drawing Lewis dot structures for covalent compounds, and we're first going to jump into it by going over the steps that you need in order to draw them. This is a little different than ionic compounds, so a few steps are necessary for us in order to ensure that we draw our Lewis dot structures correctly. The first example we're going to use is water. Water is H2O, and so we're going to be looking at water for our first Lewis dot structure. Step number one is that the atom that needs the most electrons becomes the centerpiece, the very middle of my Lewis dot structure. And as we look at our example here, this is H2O. That's the reason why I have two H's up here, is because I am dealing with H2O. So let's just write that down here. This is what we're dealing with, H2O. And this two does tell me I have two hydrogens involved here. Now hydrogen does have one outer shell electron, but I want you to recall that on the first energy level around any atom that there is only two electrons that can exist there. So in order for hydrogen to have a full energy level it only needs one more electron. So I call it the exception to the octet rule and that's why I call it a duet. Okay? It follows the duet rule. Oxygen though does follow the standard octet rule and oxygen is located in group six which means it does need an electron there and an electron there in order to have a full outer shell. So once again, the atom that needs the most electrons in order to get to an octet becomes the center atom. All right, and now we're going to redraw this. We're going to draw the center atom, which is oxygen. Okay, oxygen needed two. It's going to need an electron right there. It's going to need an electron and also an electron right there. Hydrogen only needs one. So therefore, I will draw hydrogen on the outsides. One thing you're going to notice that is I kind of paired up and aligned these atoms, I'm sorry, these electrons, that only had one. Alright, so I'm aligning them together for a future use of them. Our job now is to make use of those single pairs of electrons and pair them up. Now, I've taken the liberty already of doing this, okay, with a dash. I want you to connect, literally draw a line between your two uh, solo electrons. Now, these guys are going to become a pair of electrons. This line here has joined them. And this literally is my that's my covalent bond. Right? These guys are bonded together now. Oxygen has bonded with hydrogen. And they've bonded together by sharing a pair of electrons. Now this is my covalent bond over here. So anywhere today where we connect or pair up our electrons, that is my covalent bond. It is literally that is the bond that is holding the oxygen and the hydrogen together. Now I'm going to redraw that right here. Okay. Now this is my covalent bond and also this. So those are my covalent bonds. In this case, I have two covalent bonds within H2O. So step three was to connect up the single dots. We got them. And you could also draw them like this. So either this way is pretty cool and this way is pretty cool too. The bottom one here, it simply says you have an understanding that there are electrons involved here and that each of our lines that you draw represents two electrons, also known as my covalent bond. Now, this pair of electrons is not the covalent bond. This pair of electrons is not the covalent bond either. It's not that every single pair of electrons is a covalent bond. The bond exists between two separate atoms. Well, lastly, we want to make sure do we have an octet. All right. It's going to be easier for us to notice the octet on the second example. Remember, hydrogen needs a duet. Anytime something is shared, okay, these two electrons are shared between hydrogen and oxygen. So they're shared between the two. Anytime you share something, that means each person has ownership over. Think of two kids who are sharing a bike. That means each person, each kid has and owns that bike. All right. So in this case, um, we're looking at this right here. These electrons are actually shared. So that means hydrogen does have ownership over oxygen's electron. And oxygen actually has ownership over hydrogen's electron too. So does hydrogen have a duet? Yeah, there's two electrons right there. This hydrogen, does it have two electrons to fill its energy level up? Yeah, it does. How about oxygen? Cool thing, anytime you share something, both people own them. That means oxygen has ownership over these two electrons. These are its original two, those two over there. Right there. Eight electrons. Octet has been confirmed as well as duet. Once again, you can use this method as well. You'd have to just realize that that is two electrons and that's two electrons as well. 
Next example we're going to check out is simply uh, fluorine. Not fluoride, it's simply called fluorine. Anytime I have two of one element, it is called the element's name in the periodic table. This subscript tells me that I have two fluorines. Okay, I have a fluorine here and a fluorine here. Is there a central atom? No way, dude. I only have two atoms. You can't play monkey in the middle with two atoms, so therefore only we're going to eliminate the first step. We're going to go right to the second step. Let's do this. Drawing Lewis dot structures. Fluorine is located in group 7 or 17, which indicates seven outer shell electrons. Okay, I have one solo guy over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Connect the single dots. Really what that means, make covalent bonds. So in this case, one thing we can do is simply this. Connect them. Okay, I've also seen that done in a different way. And I've seen someone do this, circle them. That's cool too. Once again, I want to identify that this is my covalent bond. Okay, I'm going to confirm that I have octets and duets. Two, four, six electrons. Excuse me. Eight electrons. I have eight on that fluorine. Two, four, six, because they're shared, I have eight electrons. So I have octets here. And I could pop finally redraw this nice and neatly. And the bond in the middle, I'm just going to draw like that. And to me, that looks pretty neat. And another way you could really draw this nice and neat would be to, once again, draw these electron dots or draw a line indicating my covalent bond between them. Okay, so that gives me a check plus. That looks really cool. Okay, oxygen here. Oxygen is going to be a, an interesting one. We have two oxygens to deal with here. And we're going to draw them. Is there a central atom? Nope, I only have two electrons. Let's draw Lewis dot structures. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in its outer shell. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going to see I'm trying to face together the electrons that are single. All right? Because the next step is going to be number three, to connect my single dots. And here we go. I'm going to connect them. There. Yes, I'm connecting these two. And what we're looking at here are two covalent bonds, and that's known as a double bond. Now, it almost looks like a guy's face. I can picture some eyeballs here and a smile coming down. But... I want to confirm do I have octets and duets. And let's just redraw this. I want you to remember that each one of my lines is actually two electrons. Because there's an electron here and there was an electron over here on both sides. Same way here and here. And I just want to do a little better job of drawing this nice and neatly, even though I don't have to do that yet. I'm not on that step. Alright, I have the two electrons on the top, the two electrons on the side, and now I have the first pair right there. This pair. Anytime you share, you're going to share in between the two things here, okay? They're going to share right in between them. I have that pair and that pair. So let's count up our electrons to make sure we have eight. Two, four. The two in the top count as six. And the two in the bottom count as eight. So that's two, four, six, and eight. So in this case, they all actually have eight electrons. So I have an octet rule. Satisfied. I do have a double bond, and my last case is to draw it nice and neat. Okay, so here's my oxygen, here's my oxygen. I'm going to draw those two covalent bonds in the middle. I'm going to draw my unshared pair of electrons. They're called unshared pairs. I'm going to draw them like that, and that is awesome. You could have also joined them together as lines. Okay, nitrogen. Once again, we're dealing with two nitrogens here, and that's an N and an N. There is no central atom. I'm going to work on drawing Lewis dot structures right now. It's in group 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, I made the single dots kind of face each other, but I didn't do a good job with the ones on the outside. Let's connect them now. We're going to connect our single dots to form covalent bonds. And actually, I'm, I'm going to connect these guys, although I am going to redraw them afterwards. They're going to bond together. Okay, so I have three covalent bonds in this case. That's called a triple bond. And before I move any further, actually, I've connected them. That's great. Before I confirm octets and duets, I just really need to redraw this nice and neatly here. Okay, anytime you share electrons, electrons are not going to be shared from the outside to the outside. The sharing has to happen in between here. And I'm simply going to draw nitrogen, nitrogen, 
these guys right here, I'm going to draw right back here. I'm going to put them out of the way. I have one, two, three pairs of electrons. My first bond, my second bond, and my third bond. Do I have octets? You bet. That's two right there. Four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. And this is actually drawn nice and neatly. The other thing you can consider is just drawing three lines in between there to indicate I have a triple bond. So it's a triple bond. So, so far we've seen a single bond, a double bond, and now a triple covalent bond in order to have eight electrons in our outer shell. Done. Done. Okay, this element is called, uh, this, I'm sorry, this molecule is called carbon disulfide. I have one carbon and two sulfurs, and I have to identify the central atom. The atom that needs the most electrons goes in the middle. Carbon is in group four, therefore we'll have four electrons in its outer shell. Sulfur is in group six, we'll have six electrons in the outer shell. The element that needs the most is carbon, so therefore carbon will need four more electrons, it will go in the middle. And I'm going to draw sulfur on each side of it now. Okay, so the central atom in this case is carbon. I'm going to draw now my Lewis dot structure for each one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lewis dots are done. Let's connect our single dots. Let's make our single bonds first. Okay. Simple enough. Boom. Boom. I still have two more openings here. Okay. And if I was to stop here, I actually don't have six. I don't have an octet rule. So if I actually have a good way of checking, I have two electrons here. That's four, that's six, that would make seven electrons altogether, and I need eight. And carbon has two, four, five, six electrons. So I know my, my bonding is not done yet. I do need to improve this, and I'm going to pair up this guy with this one. And once you use one, it's out of commission. It cannot be used again. And this one is going to do a little crazy sharing going on to that one there. Okay, so in this case, I have two sets of double bonds. I have double bonds on this side and double bonds on this side. And before we go any further, I just need to make some sense out of this. And I'm going to draw these two electrons as that, and these two electrons as the crazy pair. The ones on the bottom, I'll draw right here. And the ones right here, I'll draw right here, too. Now I'm going to draw my sulfur, and it has these pair of electrons there and there. And I'm just going to divide that. And it's almost like I cut sulfur into three pieces and try to put those electrons uh, on the dividing points. Okay, guys, this is what I have here. Is, uh, this is carbon disulfide, uh, di meaning two sulfurs. And do I have an octet? On carbon, I have four electrons here and four electrons here. That's eight. And on sulfur, two, four, six, and eight. And so I have octets. It is actually drawn pretty nice and neatly. You can also draw these with lines if you wanted to instead of dots. Carbon tetrabromide, central atom. Well, we know from the last slide that carbon needs four, and that is actually going to be the most that any atom needs. Bromine is in lo located in group seven, so therefore it has seven in its outer shell. It only needs one more to get to eight, so therefore carbon becomes, once again, the centerpiece of this. And I'm going to draw my bromines. That is not a good R. I'm going to draw my bromines on the outside, and I'm kind of dividing the carbon by four. This is CBr4. All right, I got my central atom taken care of. My next step is to draw those Lewis dot structures. Once again, I'm trying to face the unpair, unshared pair of electrons to each other to make it a little easier for me in the end. Okay, here we go. I'm going to connect my single dots. Covalent bond is forming here. Covalent bond is forming there. There. And there. Do I have octets? Carbon has two, four, six, and eight electrons. And each bromine will have two, four, six, and eight electrons. My octets are formed. That's actually not too bad drawn. I could, you know, make it just a little smaller and a little nicer. And you'll recall that those lines indicate two electrons, and they don't have to do this because each bromine does have this in the other picture. And that's carbon tetrabromide. That's my Lewis dot structure for that. 
And guys, that's basically what my Lewis dot structures are. That's how I draw my Lewis dot structures. Those are the steps in how I draw my Lewis dot structures for covalent compounds. And once again, this right here, this right here, that right there, and this, that is my covalent bond. So we're kind of using Lewis dot structures to illustrate and have a better and clearer understanding of what my covalent bond is. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.